I'm honored to uh, be here today, this afternoon, and share with you some thoughts on a topic that's most pressing, at least as far as I've encountered in my visits to various communities recently, is the issue of anti-Semitism um, throughout history, and particularly recently. And I just think that there is a frustration upon many, with many people experiencing this frustration that we're looking for so many remedies to a problem that perhaps we cannot remedy. There's only, there's only one way to remedy the problem. And that remedy is something that somehow there's a resistance, a reluctance, a reticence to surrender to that real, real, real way to overcome this problem. I was confronted by a woman last week, <coughs> excuse me, who asked me this question during a lecture. I was talking about the Holocaust. He said, Rabbi, why is it that we have to find out why? Why do the non-Jews hate us? What could we do to make them like us? Well, the only thing we could do to make them like us, and it won't work, the only attempt, futile attempt, is self-annihilation by becoming more like them. Medrash Rabin Shir Hashirim says, the moment that Jews start becoming like them, like those who they shouldn't be like, that's when they chase us away and they really are out to annihilate the Jewish people. I want to share with you from a philosopher that he tried. He tried very hard to come closer to Judaism, and some say he would have become closer had, had he lived longer. And I want to share with you his interpretation of anti-Semitism. And we're going to find out that many, and maybe perhaps many of us, are not that far from being anti-Semites. Maybe some of us need to own up to their own guilt in having a smattering of that sense in our behavior, in our true belief of what Judaism means. So this is a book, it's called Emil, F. Emil L. Fackenheim. You know he was, a, him and Rosenzweig had all the time confrontations back and forth and philosophical issues about Judaism. The subtitle is A Jewish Philosopher's Response to the Holocaust. So in the beginning of this book, on page 11, he writes, Fackenheim correctly points out that the impetus to collapse Jewishness into being the same as everyone else, which Shmuel and Novi, they came to him with that, Ni'ig Chalagoyim Beis Yisrael, that's pointed king, that impetus to have our Jewishness becoming like everyone else, is itself a form of anti-Semitism. I hope we heard that, what, what he was saying. I'm not telling you that he's Das Torah, he is the final word in the Torah. But I'm just trying to share with you a, a perspective of someone who wasn't religious. And in their desperation to fit in, because I'm becoming like everyone else, he means, right? No matter what the current intellectual fashion or fad Jews are often duped into becoming the unwitting accomplices to the anti-Semitic pressure to assimilate and to be like everyone else. In the end, this is really a heavy indictment, next few words, in the end, they are like their murderers. I think Fackenheim's cousin once wrote him a letter, Rosenstock or Rosenzweig, I'm not sure, but I remember seeing that letter, that he said he realized that there were many Jews that suffered the pain, the unimaginable pain of the Holocaust, the terror, the horror of families torn apart, children smashed against walls, the screaming of babies calling mommy. And it just, at one point we thought, well, isn't that, isn't that just a futile attempt? But we call mommy all day, we call Hashem, Hashem, Tati. And without answer, so why, what's going to help my child calling mommy? These Nazis are out to kill and destroy and terrorize and torture. There are many people that in their, in their anger and in their deciding not to be on talking terms with God anymore, Rosenzweig believes that they accomplished more than Hitler was able to accomplish. Hitler was able to accomplish the physical 
annihilation, decimation, or attempted decimation of a nation. We are blessed. Kileidita Shashem is Amai. God does not leave, abandon his nation. And from ashes we rebuild. So we could sit and try to think, but wait, why? Why do non Jews hate us? What did Hitler experience that he hates Jews to the point, I understand he had an incident with some Jewish person, but to the point of annihilating and torturing people forever from his perspective? And other times in history where people chose to torture Jews. So there was a Yid, a Heliki Yid, a holy Jew, who was a great scholar, one of the greatest seven, seven, seven of the greatest minds in, 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 in Europe, pre-war, he was killed in Passover during the Second World War. His name was the great Gon Arab Nachem Zemba Hashem Yimkam Dama, may God avenge his blood. Who writes in a safer he was a very prolific writer, but many of his writings were lost. Totsos Chaim on Shabbos is the one that people saved and it's here and people use it when they learn the Gemara tractate Shabbos. There is a safe collection of a lot of his writings, Chedushi HaGramaz. In this safer, Rabbi Nacham Zember writes, remember, it's a page, Membez, well that's maybe, um, maybe Simon Membez, I'm sorry. Maybe it's, um, yeah, Simon Memches. He writes as follows. Breshish Rabba, Omer Rab Shimon ben Yechoi, Halochahik biadua, it's a halochahi that we know. Esav, the anti, the, the non Jews hate the Jews. Sayyidina Yaakov. Ma inyon hamusuk halochahi. Why do they use the word halochahi? Halochahi is waiting six hours for milk, five hours, six hours. Putting on tefillin in the morning, davening, saying Krishma. That's halacha. What's the halacha? Halacha be a dua she'esav son in Yaakov. So I'll read you and translate what Rabbi Nachum Zem, the great Gaon Tzadik, Tzuchus Yogad Aleinu writes. Baram, but behold and, and, and understand. Yeshnam anoshim hachoshvim. There are people who think. Umenasim and they attempt limtsoi esanimukim to find the reasons, the of asibos and the causes. Listen, awesome shall hagoyim kalape yehudim. Like this person who came over to me last week. Why do the non-Jews hate the Jews? What do we do to them? Ulam hamatzias hachicha. Reality teaches us that to look for the reason there is no the ki ein afsi ba'achas nuchah. There is no one appropriate reason. There is no reason for this sinner. This sinner is chaseira kol siba. This hatred is absent of any cause or reason, v'chol nimuk, any interpretation. Elarak hepech hafach libam l'snei amai. Hashem turned the heart to hate Klal Yisrael, the Jewish people. Kan soinim es ha-yehudim al shem kapitalistim. In New York, they can hate Jews because they're capitalists. V'sham and in other parts of the world, they can hate them because they're socialists. They're very intelligent, smart, and wise. We're a burden on them. We have our own schools, our own food, our own, our own subsidized school system, something by the government as well. We're a burden. They're too extreme in their religion. The Khan and other places, Bisham and other places, because they're, they're more enlightened and they're giving up their religion and they're not really following their religion and they shouldn't mix in into other areas of life. They should stay in, within their religion and why are they mixing into politics or something else. Kach, Tomit, Soysrim, all the reasons that we, we attempt to give contradict each other. Like Kurtov shall he go, and not even an ounce of intelligence with Shikul Das and true thinking. And what he says is as follows. Rabbi Shimon is saying, That it is halach, it's a law. Esav hates Yaakov, meaning, The sin of the hatred of Esav to Yaakov. It's a halacha psuka, it's a law. Like putting on tefillin. Without any specific reason. Or any specific rationale. Rationale. It's just it is. 
God told us that's what we do. That God made the world that way. That the, that, that the non-Jew, many of them, not all of them, many, many of them hate the Jew. And all the attempts at trying to figure it out and play play like a puzzle and put the pieces together and think how we can do it are defeating the purpose for why exactly Hashem made that happen. What is What are some of the ways that we can escape all these troubles? You know, Adi Lang, in his introduction to his book, one of his books, he writes, the way out, he quotes Confucius, the way out is through the door. Why doesn't anybody use that method? He means to say, obviously, that sometimes things are very simple and uncomplicated, but we look to complicate them. Imagine if all the officials, the prime ministers and the, all the assistant prime ministers, the vice prime ministers and all the presidents and all the government officials and every minister in the world would go to the, every yeshiva student and every taf noshim, no, children, every would go to the kaisel with all their heart and scream, Tate in Himmel, Father in Heaven, Father in Heaven, have Rachmanus, have mercy, please, please, let's end this, we believe you are Hashem, Hu Eli Kim, Einoid Milvadoid, there's nobody in the world but that Kaddish Baruch Hu, but Mechabalin as a way of life, not just, as some kind of a theme. Imagine how that would engender the compassion of the Bari Elam, and we would perhaps be redeemed from all these tsaris. When we call out to Hashem as our father, the Kotzke Rebbe once, I understand he once heard somebody davening. He was davening and he said, Tata in Himmel, Father in Heaven, I need blah, 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 whatever it was. And the Kutzke Rebbe borrowed a phrase from the Gemara in Talmud and Chulun, page 11. Talmud says, Maybe it's not, it's not your father. Maybe you say it's your father, but you don't really feel it's your father. Maybe you feel it's your father, but you don't act like it's your father. Maybe you feel like it's your father, but you don't really show respect to him like he's your father. We need to go to the Kaisal. We need to go somewhere to Davin together, Klai Yisrael. Together with a real new attitude and the way out is through the door. Why can't all of us use that method? Thank you very much.